happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to a Jada and Stitches live stream. I hope you all had a lovely weekend and are ready to start the week off with something crafty. Uh, I would like to thank Nico and Lynette before we get started. <laughs> Nico and Lynette are uh, getting the party started. Nico with a membership milestone and gifting a membership. Thank you so much. And Lynette with a very generous super chat. Thank you both so much. Uh, welcome, everybody. We um, did a little poll of the family members yesterday to sort of see what everybody felt like doing today. And we are going to revisit our Splendid Spring Shell Stitch Sack pattern. We have a tutorial for that. The tutorial is linked in the description box down below, but we're going to make it Valentine's Day. And one of the things I love about Valentine's Day is that it gives you an opportunity to, sure, give your sweetie something, but it also gives you a chance to give yourself something or, um, I want to say, spoil? I guess spoil is a good word. Spoil your friends. I, 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 you know, growing up in my 20s, I didn't really, I never, I never managed to have a Valentine for Valentine's Day. I think that only happened like once or twice. <laughs> so I got into the habit of actually making really funny Valentine's cards and Valentine's gifts for all my friends because I really enjoyed doing that. I love any excuse to sort of give, give everybody a little smile. Um, so that's what I like about Valentine's Day. I'd like to use it as an opportunity to just give anybody uh, I think needs to pick me up a little something. So this shell sack, this little shell stitch sack that we made a couple of years ago uh, would be a perfect little gift bag with like some chocolates in it. And you know those pretty little foil wrapped heart chocolates that come in like pink and purple and whatever. Um, I love those. Uh, maybe just, you know, any cute little thing. Uh, this is a sweet little sack for that. And best of all, it's a scrap project. So I thought, um, oh, oh my. Oh, the bell is back. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. In Stitches. Um, that tells me to look at the, uh, look at the super, look for supers in the live chat. Dizzy, hi Dizzy, thank you. <laughs> Dizzy D has gifted a membership and Regina won it. Congratulations, Regina, welcome back. Thank you, Dizzy. Mr. and Stitches, you better say hi before I, I run my mouth for the next hour. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I wouldn't want to interrupt you running your mouth. I do like to run my mouth. <laughs> um, anyway, we've got uh, a tutorial in existence already for today's project. So if you need a quick refresher, that is available for you. I'm also thinking to make it extra kind of heartsy poo that I'm going to add our little heart applique to it. We've got two tutorials actually for the little heart applique. We have a free pattern for that little heart applique over on our website. All the links are down below. Um, so I thought maybe I'd make a couple of little hearts and just add them to the bag, but we'll see where the day takes us. I've pulled out some um, really warm and sweet pinks and reds. I've got a couple of variegated self-striping yarns here. Uh, we're gonna have a vote. We're gonna decide what I decide to do with the yarn. For today's project, you can make yours out of scraps. You can use um, any number of colors you might want to. Um, the original tutorial shows how to change colors, which is super easy. Um, but depending on what we end up doing here today, I might just do it all in one yarn. I might change colors. I don't know. We'll see where the day takes us. Um, so that said, let's jump into this. Mr. And Stitches, do you think it's okay to do a poll? Um, Will that slow things down? Or we should can we... do one. It does really affect the speed, but it's still early and the computer's cool. So let's do them. It's better to do them sooner rather than later in the stream. Okay. Then um, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's do a poll. Why let's not? start with a poll. All right. So here's, here's what I'm thinking. Um, I would like to have everybody decide what I'm going to use to make our little Valentine's Day shell stitch sack. Um, so I've got three, maybe four options. Let's go with four options. Um, let me know when you're ready and I'll read them out to you. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, the question is... What color shall I use to make the Valentine's Day shell stitch sack? Or just, you know, what color shall I use? Everybody knows what we're doing here. 
Mr. and Stitches has been running the little the little picture uh, profile of yes, what we're doing. Yes, I've been showing the original um, pictures for the shell. What was it? The shell stitch. It's the it's it's the splendid yes. spring shell sack. Yeah, splendid shell stitch. And of course, um, um, one of the family members mentioned making it in Easter colors too, which the original one is definitely in Easter. So when you say what colors? Yep. Are you are you asking for all the colors you're going to blend together? I'm no, I'm going to tell you which what the options are. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. <clears throat> so Option you can, one. you can, yeah. So what color am I using today? This is to make the sack. Um, obviously there's a Valentine's theme going for mine, but if you wanted to make some more that were spring colors or Easter colors, I mean, go for it. This is uh, one of those little bags that is a great scrap buster and kind of suits any time of the year. It's just a nice, quick little way to make up a gift sack. Um, while Mr. Stitches is getting the pole set up, I will read out things to him in a minute. You're gonna want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. You might find a stitch marker handy. I'm using a four and a half millimeter hook. It's a size seven. And you can use some ribbon, cord, drawstring, um, I've got a whole bunch of sort of options here. I've got some ribbon, I've got some braided cord, I have some satiny cording. I've even got this really nice little uh, vestige from a previous bag of some sort. Um, I really like that, red and white. Kind of Christmassy, but I thought, you know what, depending on the colors I end up going with, it could be very Valentine's-y too. Um, so that is to kind of complete the bag, but if you don't have any ribbon or cord, that's fine. You can just make yourself a crocheted drawstring. Uh, which we'll cover briefly towards the end. Not a big deal. Anytime, Mr. Stitches. I'm ready. Okay, so the first option is this purple, pink, self-striping yarn. So purple slash pink yarn. This would be, um, I wouldn't bother changing colors. I would just make the whole bag using this and see where the stripes take me. Okay, so, so that's, that's option the first one. one. It's very pretty. Option two is this multi-pink variegated yarn okay so there's pinks i think there's a bit of red in here multi pink variegated yeah that's number two so You're this again i wouldn't be changing colors i would just make the whole bag out of this oh okay um number three this really pretty pink it's hot pink it's a little thinner it's about a three four weight it's got a little bit of a sparkle running through it so just solid pink with a bit of sparkle <laughs> that's option number three that's option three. And then option four is I use up these pink, red, and white scraps, and I make the whole thing changing colors, and I stripe it. Specifically stripe it. And there we go. So option one, purple, pink, self-striping yarn. Option two, the multi-pink variegated. Option three, I make the whole thing pink, with which got a bit of sparkle to it. And option four, I use all three of these colors mixed together, and uh, I intentionally stripe it. So, all this... right. So start the poll. So poll incoming. Uh, please make sure you vote. If you can't see the poll for whatever reason, um, you can refresh the page. That might help. The poll is up top in the chat, and uh, it, it's sometimes it's up top, or it could be at the bottom. Could of be at the, the chat. bottom too. It depends on your device. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and in the mean, and that will determine for me which you know, which ribbony thing I end up using as a drawstring. Uh, but we can get to that later. So I'm just going to put my drawstrings, my ribbons, and everything to the side. Uh, once again, scissors, yarn needle, stitch marker. We or may not find it handy. We are working a shell stitch in the round. So if you find when you're working in the round that you lose track of where you are or you kind of speed up or your brain trails off into happy little nowhere land which is exactly what's supposed to happen when we're crocheting um, sometimes it's helpful to mark that first stitch of the row with a stitch marker just so when you get back around to it it kind of wakes you out of your reverie and you go oh yeah i gotta i gotta finish my row um, so that's why that's handy and the four and a half millimeter hook um, i'm using a size four medium weight yarn so all of these are size four medium weight technically i think this is one of those three, four weights. I, I think, I can't remember who this is by. It might be Uptown Yarn. It might be James C. Brett. I'm not sure. I've had it quite a while, um, but it's got this lovely little sparkle that runs through it. And, but it's, it's very like 
thin compared to the other ones. It's definitely more of a DK weight or a size three, but I can use it for this pattern with this hook, no problem. It's just gonna be like a slightly more um, lightweight little sack. Uh, so that's, those are the options. We're gonna let it run to at least a hundred and some odd votes, and then uh, we'll get going. I've got a little bit of coffee left over and some water today. We got up to 180 votes very quickly. Okay, perfect. Call it. Let's um, get. It's only been two minutes. Should we, should we wait another minute or so? Has everyone voted? Um, we've got. I know a lot of click, people are. Uh, click the thumbs up button if you voted, and if you didn't vote, click the thumbs up button. Ooh, a Scrabble bag. That's a great idea, Crocus. <laughs> I love that. Yes, this is this is a fun little. Uh, now, um. I don't know how big your Scrabble your Scrabble keys might be, but um, the the little spaces in between you might want to use an even smaller hook, just so you have smaller spaces in between the shells. If you're going to use it for something like dice or Scrabble tiles or something like that, I love that idea. <laughs> Thumbs up, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> okay, pull that pole, mister. Okay, here it comes. Here we go. 202 votes. Nice. Lovely. Here it comes. What color? Multi pink variegated 56. All right, that's the winner. Runner up was the purple pink, the yarn scraps. And the pretty solid pink. Okay, so the yarn scraps was number three. Pretty pink was in last place. We are going with the multi pink variegated. All right, that's what we're doing. Here we go. So um, the original tutorial tells you how to change colors. Oh my goodness, Marie. Thank you, Marie. Oh, that reminds me. Marie, thanks for reminding me. Today's little shell sack pattern is today's sneaky sale. In addition, like I said, the heart little heart applique pattern is free over on our website. Uh, we've got both links down below. Um, thank you, Marie. <laughs> um, so in the original tutorial, we sort of showed how to change colors. I'll reference it in today's uh, video, but I'm going to show you how to just keep going. Um, if you want to just make it all in one color, especially if you're using something self-striping like this. And I'm going to see if I can find the middle without getting a super huge amount of yarn barf here. Let's see. I don't know. Doesn't seem very promising. All right, I'm pulling it out. Oh, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, and there's my end. Ha ha. All right, let's get some going here. All right, here we go. We are starting with a cinch circle. If the cinch circle drives you bananas, then you can make a chain four ring. That's perfectly acceptable. Hello, Jamie. Jamie with a membership milestone. Jamie's been a member for 48 months. Thank you. Jamie says, working on my stacked shell, stacked granny squares. Uh-huh. Y'all, if you missed it, we've launched our 2024 calendar blanket. Granny's Magical Cupboard, and this is the first shell, I'm or the first square, I should say. It's a stack shell stitch. I'm in love with it. I've already made two. I've got more pictures from you all to share later today. Thank you for sending them in. If you want to submit photo photographs for sharing, you can uh, send them to us at our Etsy shop. Uh, just click on Message Seller when you get there, or whatever thread you might have open with us, message-wise. And uh, if you've never shared with us before, let us know it's okay to share in your message, just so... Uh, we, we know that's okay to share publicly on the community tab. Show and thank you everybody too. who's been sending in your photos. Show, show the other square too. Oh, the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. That's the other one. Hi, Catherine. Catherine's been a member for four months. Thank you, Catherine. Catherine with a membership milestone says, thank you, Nico, <laughs> for my membership gift on the last live stream. It was a lovely surprise as I was having internet issues and missed the live. Well, wonderful. And yes, thank you very much, Nico. Connie, Connie just gifted five memberships. Thank you so much, Connie. Let's see here. We've got Debbie, Star Derek, Charlene, PB, and Sandy. Congratulations. All right, that's the uh, the new square. That is the Friday video. So if you missed it, we'll, uh, we'll have it. Um, uh, it's posted, it should be right up top if you visit our website, or I should say our channel homepage, it'll be right up top. Uh, but we'll post it again later. 
All right, here we go. We're gonna start with a cinch circle, or you can make a chain four ring. It is perfectly fine to use either one. We are going to start what is, which typically is the first row of a granny square, but instead of chain two corners, we're only using chain one spaces throughout this entire project, and that's to keep the spaces small. So here we go. We're gonna chain three. I already chained one to secure the circle, so if you're, Made your cinch circle, have three chains. If you made a chain four ring, you want to chain three. Counts as your first double crochet. Two more double crochet into the ring. I'm working over my short tail. That creates one shell and I hear the bell. Hi Annette, welcome to Alpaca. Thank you for joining the family. Chain one and three more double crochet into the ring. Chain one and three more double crochet. I already like this. This is a very fun looking yarn. Chain one and three more double crochet. So at the end of row one, you'll have shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain one, or three double crochet, chain one, four times. Goodness gracious, I hear the bell again. <laughs> Hi Louise. Louise has been a member for seven months. Louise with the membership milestone. Thanks Louise, thanks for being here. And Vicki. Vicki's been a member for 32 months. Hi Vicki, I'm glad you're here too. Membership milestones all around. At the end of row one, you can cinch up your little cinch circle. If you'd used the uh, chain four ring, you should have a very small little circle or space in the middle. Don't forget that last chain one, and you can join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And you'll have what looks like a circle. You do have little chain one spaces in between those those shells or those three double crochets, and you wanna be able to, to sort of find them with your fingers because we are building all of our shells into existing chain one spaces. So here we go. We're gonna slip stitch across. So slip stitch into the next stitch, slip stitch into the next stitch. So you're slip stitching across those two stitches and that brings you to your chain one space. There's my little finger poking through it slip stitch into the chain one space and we are going to start row two in the chain one space if you were going to change colors once you close a row with a slip stitch in the top of the chain three you can just fasten off and you can join your yarn with a slip stitch chain three or if you're comfortable with the standing double crochet you can join a row with a standing double crochet in any chain one space chain three to begin and work Two more double crochet into the same space. I hear the bell. Hi, Joanna. Joanna upgraded to silk. Thank you so much, Joanna. And Deanna. Hey, Deanna. Deanna gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Deanna. And Karen won it. Congratulations, Karen. Welcome back to the family. After you've worked three double crochet, or in this case, a chain three and two double crochet into that first space, chain one and work three more double crochet into the same space. So you're only focusing on the spaces. You don't have to worry about the double crochets after you make them. Keep an eye out for those chain one spaces. After you work three double crochet, chain one. So get into the habit of three double crochet, chain one. Three double crochet, chain one. It's like a mamba, three double crochet, chain one. I'm shaking my little shoulders around. If you lose track of the beginning of the row, here's where your stitch marker might come in handy. I've just clipped it onto my chain three and now I can turn my brain off. All I need to do is look for the next chain one space and work three double crochet, chain one twice into that space. Three double crochet, chain one. And before I leave, same space, Three double crochet, chain one. Chain one. 
So there we go, so far, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, worked into this first space. And now I've repeated that, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, into the next space. Same thing into space number three and into space number four. If you have trouble seeing your spaces, then you can use stitch markers to mark them out as well. Oh my goodness. Hello, Queen Pepper Dust. <laughs> I love that name. Welcome to Alpaca. <laughs> Thank you for joining the family. So three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one. And we're kind of getting a bit of a gentle square here, obviously, as we start the bottom of this little bag. And then when you find your last stitch or your last space, you're going to work your last three double crochet chain one twice into it. And at the end of row two, you'll have eight shells or 24 double crochets. And every single set of three double crochets is interrupted by a chain one. So this is to give us a bit of a circle-y, squarish bottom. We are going to turn it into a circle here in a minute. And uh, like I said, if you're just joining us, we are working on the shell stitch, the Splendid Spring shell stitch sack. We have a tutorial already for it on the channel. So if you want to see a more succinct version of it, that's linked down below. Mr. and Stitches has got the pictures of what we're making today, only I am making it with a pink variegated yarn because uh, this is going to have a bit of a Valentine's Day flair to it. Hey, Bonnie. Bonnie's been a member for 48 months. There's my bell. <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie. Bonnie says, already have four calendar squares done. Holy smokes, that's awesome. Yes, you guys, I cannot believe how many squares some of you have made already. That's wonderful. Granny squares are so much fun to make, especially when they're small. Little little eight inch grannies do not take very long. Join the, the uh, row with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And now we've got a very tidy little square going. We want to start in a chain one space. So if you're changing colors, you can fasten off. So cut your yarn, pull it back through your, your loop, fasten off, join your new yarn with a slip stitch chain three or standing double crochet, whatever you want, in really any chain one space you want. But for the rest of us, I'm going to slip stitch across and into that chain one space. So I'm just slip stitching across those two stitches and into the space. I want to start my shell in a space because all my shells are worked into spaces. Thank you, Peggy, for picking up a pattern. And hello, Rose. Rose has just gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Rose. And congratulations, Madeline. <laughs> Welcome to the family. We are going to roll right into row three now. Row three, we are, yeah, we're still kind of growing our, uh, the bottom of our little sack. So we're going to chain three to begin. This counts as a double crochet. And we are going to work two more double crochet into that chain one space. Mr. and Stitches is ringing the bell. Hi, Sally. Welcome to Alpaca. Thanks for joining. We're going to chain one. And now, because we want to alter the feeling of this being kind of square. Hi, Gina. Thank you so much for picking up a pattern. And Susan. Hi, Susan. Welcome to Alpaca. <laughs> Thank you for joining the family. Oh my gosh, and Amy. Welcome, Amy. Thank you for joining. We have a bit of a square right now at the end of row two. So for row three, we want to unsquare it, <laughs> but we still want to increase. So we're going to change where we do our, our little three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one. So we started in that corner space with the shell, but it's the middle spaces where we actually want to continue with the increase. So into this little space, this is the sort of the side of what was square, this chain one space. We're going to work three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one. And this will unsquare the pattern for us. So there's the first shell, chain one, and then shell number two, three double crochet.
goodness gracious, Roseanne, thank you. Thank you for picking up a pattern, Roseanne. Hi, Connie. Connie's been a member for 33 months. Thank you so much, Connie, with a membership milestone. She says, have you tried the Red Heart All-in-One Granny Square yarn? It makes great hats. No, I have not tried it. I haven't seen it, um, not in stores anyway. I've sort of, a couple people have sent me screenshots of it. Thank you all who have. Um, I haven't gotten my hands on any of it yet. I've been a little preoccupied. <laughs> But uh, as, as soon as I find a ball, I might give it a, I might give it a whirl. We'll see. And um, Susan and Sonia. Hello, hello. Welcome both of you to the family. Sonia has joined Alpaca. Susan has joined Merino. Thank you both so much. I am very glad you're all here. So into that side space, we worked shell, chain one, shell, chain one, because we are changing up that square. We don't want it to be square. We want it to be a little more rounded and it will round itself out as we work the rest of the sack, but we don't really want to start with a square bottom. So we're changing. My my uh, row is, oh, it looks like we're buffering a little bit. We're getting a bit of buffer. Looks like it's back. We're back. We Hi, just everybody. just took a split second there. We're good. Okay, so just to recap, I just marked the first chain three of the row so I know where the row starts. Uh, what was a corner space in the previous row only gets one shell chain one, and what was just sort of a side space in the previous row gets shell chain one, shell chain one. And that's so that we unsquare the square because we're starting with a nice, we're kind of making a circular-esque bag. Hi, Shari. Shari with a super chat. Thank you so much. Glad to know you guys are here and glad we're not frozen anymore. <laughs> All right, this is another side. So this was a side of what was the previous row would have been our typical side. We are unsquaring it. So we're gonna work three double crochet, chain one twice into that space. So that's shell chain one. And I'm gonna do it again before I leave. This is the last row that we do any increasing on. There we go. And you can see we are slowly unsquaring the previous row. So there's the, the, the remainder of the square of the previous row and we are unsquaring it in this row. Nico, thank you so much for gifting a membership. <laughs> and congratulations, Brenda. Welcome back to the family. Lynette, thank you so much for the super chat, Lynette. You guys are so sweet and supportive today, my goodness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Into this previous corner space, we're gonna work three double crochet, chain one. There's my chain one. And then we repeat. So this was originally a side splice. So we're going to go three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one into the side space into what was a corner space, only three double crochet, chain one, and then we're gonna do it again. Three double crochet, chain one twice into what was a side space. And at the end of row three, we're gonna have 12 shells or 36 double crochets and 12 chain one spaces. So this is a side. I'm gonna continue with my little increase because I wanna set up the bottom of my little bag to be roundish. It will be quite round by the time I work the first upper row of the bag. Don't forget the chain one. And three double crochet, chain one into the corner space. Sherry asks, are we making a new granny square pattern? Not today. We are making our original granny shell stitch sack, what we call the splendid spring sack. And we are giving it more of a Valentine's Day theme since next next month, it's coming up fast, actually. I think Valentine's Day is what, like two weeks away? Um, but if you're like me, um, you like to give little Valentine's Day pick-me-ups to your friends and possibly yourself, <laughs> not just your sweetheart. So lots of reasons to be sweet in February. And the last space, which was on a side, gets the shell chain one, shell chain one treatment. So we have a total of 12 shells and 12 chain one spaces at the end of row three, or 36 double crochets all split into sets of three. So I'm back at the beginning, 
Don't forget the last chain one and you can join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. If you want to change colors, fasten off, join your yarn with a slip stitch in any space you like and you should have something that looks a little more roundish. It almost has a little bit of a it's a little bit diamond-esque, but it's yeah, it's roundish. We unsquared our square from row two, and we kind of evened things out for row three. That's the extent of the increasing. So for every row going forward, you're going to have 12 shells or 36 double crochet stitches, and you will always have 12 chain one spaces all the way around. So we don't have any more corners. We're not doing any more increasing. All we're going to do is work shell chain one in every single space. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Thank you for picking up a pattern. Just finishing off my coffee. This is a very fun yarn. I like how it kind of looks like candy. Yeah, it looks like candy. I, I like that. All right, from here on out, you can really turn your brain off. <clears throat> if you're not changing colors, always slip stitch towards the next chain one space and start in the chain one space. If you are changing colors, and because this is such a scrap friendly project, you can change colors at the end of every row. I like to finish a row with a slip stitch and fasten off at the top of that chain three. Join your new color in any chain one space you want and you can join with a slip stitch chain three or a standing double crochet. I get asked that a lot. Why don't you start a double crochet row with a standing double crochet? If you're comfortable using a standing double crochet, use it. Um, I find sometimes my standing double crochets are a little on the loose side, so I still kind of like to use the chain three, but um, it's totally personal choice. And it absolutely doesn't matter in this little pattern, so. I've slip stitched into a chain one space. I'm gonna start row four. Hey, Deanna. Deanna with a super chat. Thank you so much. Says, guesses have been on. So excited for 2024 blanket. Yes, Deanna has been guessing. <laughs> Deanna guessed that we were gonna do a granny square themed blanket this year, which kind of shocked me because usually nobody guesses what we do. <laughs> Two more double crochets to finish that shell off in that space and a chain one. I'm just gonna mark my first stitch. Another nice thing about the stitch marker marking the first stitch in your row is if you're not changing colors like me and you're using a fun, busy, variegated kind of yarn like this, it can make the beginning of the row even more camouflaged. So you might find it handy to use that little shell, uh, or I should say stitch marker. Um, I love these things and uh, it just, it just lets you turn your brain off. You don't have to think so hard. Now you're only looking for the chain one spaces. Remember, you've always got 12 chain one spaces all the way around. Every single space gets three double crochet chain one. Absolutely no changes. Everything is the same. Three double crochet, chain one. Next space, three double crochet, chain one. And this is the row that turns it into a bowl. Hello, Kathy and Ronald Jones. <laughs> Glad you guys are in the house. Cousins with a membership milestone. Kathy and Ron have been members for 31 months. Thank you so much. They say, good day, cousins. Enjoying your company, Kathy and Ron. Thank you guys so much. I'm glad you're both here. Three double crochet, chain one in every single space. Easy peasy, turn your brain off, put your feet up. You're making a cute little gift bag that you can stuff full of chocolates or a little toy or a new pair of socks, perhaps. I know a lot of my friends would would thank me for a, you know some chocolates, but would really be happy if I gave them a new pair of cozy socks. <laughs> Three double crochet, chain one in every single chain one space. And that's it for the rest of the pattern. This is row four. Uh, I think there's like, how many rows of there is this? All the way up to row 12 before we add a little finishing row. So 12 rows of just three double crochet, chain one in every single chain one space. So the stitch count doesn't change from one row to the next going forward. And you're just looking for the spaces. So easy to see. Welcome, welcome everybody. 
If you are just joining us, we are making a Valentine's Day version of our Splendid Spring Shell Sack. Uh, we are probably going to add a couple of heart appliques to it. Uh, our heart applique pattern is a free one over on our website. You'll find that link down below. And we have tutorials for both the shell stitch sack and the heart applique. In fact, I think we've done the heart applique a couple times because we've used it for several projects here on the show. And um, the shell stitch sack pattern, which we are doing in pretty pink variegated yarn today, is our sneaky sale. So if you feel like picking up the pattern, it's on sale today over in our Etsy shop. And a big thank you to everybody who does pick it up. Join your row with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And if you want to change color, you can do that at any time. Finish the row, fasten off, and join your new yarn with a chain three, like a slip stitch chain three, or a double standing double crochet in any chain one space. Uh, if you're not changing color, after you've finish the row, just slip stitch across to the next chain one space, chain three, and continue. And I'm just going to use this pretty candy-like variegated yarn for today's bag. Chain one, three double crochet, chain one, and now once you're past row four, and we just finished row four, you'll see that those chain one spaces are super easy to see. Very, very clear and easy to see. Uh, so you may not require your stitch markers to mark them out if you were doing that before, but you might still want to continue just to mark that first chain three or at the start of the row with a stitch marker, just in case you find it a little difficult to see. We actually have a few uh, crochet heart patterns on the channel. We have tutorials for several actually, but the smallest is our original heart applique tutorial. Very small, very quick. It's an absolutely a scrappy kind of project. In fact, I think, I think the heart applique may have been the first ever tutorial we did here on the channel a billion years ago. And I like to just keep curling my little bag up so that the right sides of all of my double crochet shells are facing out. And you can really start to sort of see that bowl shape happening. If after row four or even row five, yours is not turning into a bowl, it will, don't worry. As long as you've got the right stitch count, you should have uh, 12 shells and 12 chain one spaces all the way around. The only reason that it might still be kind of flat is because your tension is a little loose and that's okay. It will eventually turn into a bowl. A birthday. A birthday? birthday Who is the birthday girl? Birthday, birthday girl. It's Joyce. Joyce? Happy birthday, Joyce! Regina or Regina asks, is the pattern in the Etsy shop or the website? So the little shell stitch bag pattern is in the Etsy shop, but the heart applique pattern is on the website. Both are linked below. Um, so if you're looking for one or the other, we've got links directly to them. Three double crochet, chain one, and I'm back to the beginning again. So this is a pre-birthday celebration for Rosie. <laughs> Rosie's birthday's on Wednesday. Congratulations, Rosie. Happy That's birthday. coming up soon. Happy birthday. Thank you, Janine. Thank you for picking up a couple of patterns. So I just finished, I think, row five. Let me count. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, I just finished row five. So you can see I've got like a little bowl happening now. Actually wants to roll around like a bowl. So that's the bottom of my sack going. It uh, bowled up quite nicely. I'm just going to weave in that tail so that I don't have to flip the whole thing inside out later and do it then. It's my cinch circle tail, so I'm going to make sure I weave it through some of these stitches back and forth so that it doesn't want to loosen up on me. I'm using a, um, 
a, uh, an acrylic yarn today. So this yarn doesn't really want to. I just want to let everyone know mm -hmm. um, if you have questions, because I have seen a bunch of questions about the pattern. What we're going to do is save them up and we'll take uh, questions on the pattern uh, towards the end. How's that sound? Sure. Janet, thank you for picking up a pattern. Uh, yes, I was kind of explaining um, what we were doing. Now that we're sort of simmering down and it's pretty much the same thing from here on out, I might be able to pay a little bit more attention to the chat, but the Mr's right. We do like to take questions at the end um, because then I can give it my full attention. Yeah, I think it's better that way. That way you can give full attention to the question. So uh, um, stick around and uh, we can, when we ask uh, for questions, you can ask it again and we will, we will grab as many as we can. I will make sure the squirrels are fed. Yes, there we go. So bottom one is woven in. There we go. Oh my goodness, Joanne, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. Here we go. All right, so I've slip stitched already across to my chain one space, so I'm ready to start. This is looking pretty cute. This is row six. I'm gonna be doing, doing six through 12, all the same stitch style for each row. So three double crochet, chain one in every single space. I start every row with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and I finish that shell with two more double crochet in the same space, and then a chain one. And then I just move to the next chain one space, and I work three double crochet, chain one. And uh, before I go too far, I just like to mark that first stitch of the row with a stitch marker, so I know when I get back around to it that I've done a complete row. And that's it. This is row six. I'm going to do from six to 12, all the same. And in the meantime, maybe you guys can help me decide what I'm going to be using for ribbon. These are my three or my four options uh, as a drawstring. I pulled them out of the uh, the ribbon scrap bag earlier today. I believe we have another birthday girl. Is that Robin? Lots of birthdays this week. Wow, so many birthdays in January. Happy birthday, Robin. Happy birthday. Um, Annette asking about the needle. This is, if this is the needle you're asking about, that's the yarn needle or the wool needles I use. Um, I, uh, I, I can't, I can't <laughs> recommend these enough. A wool needle has that little uh, plastic loop eye. You can sort of see it there against my finger. And the entire stock of the needle is the same size. So it just, it goes to a point obviously, but it doesn't get bigger and bigger and bigger in order to make room for the eye of the needle, like you typically find in a lot of needles or darning needles. It's this little plastic loop eye is quite flexible, so it allows you to um, easily thread it for one. And B, it kind of collapses if it has to, to go through sort of tighter stitches. So wool needles are typically sold in sets of three. Mine are by H.A. Kid, um, but Knitter's Pride and Pony, um, as well as probably a ton of other manufacturers also make wool needles under their own name. And um, we've got affiliate links for Knitter's Pride and Pony on Amazon. I don't know if Mr. and Stitches has those available, but uh, we'll definitely make sure that we link them in the description box down below after today's live stream is finished. Um, the Pony ones are different colors, so they're all aluminum shafts, which is great, makes them nice and strong. Uh, Ponies make them in different colors, which is really pretty. And Knitter's Prides are very similar to H.A. Kid. I've also seen H.A. Kids for sale under the name Love Knitting in the Walmart uh, craft section. I bought a pair or a set of those too. Uh, but I just want to say, um, not sponsored or anything, I really love H.A. Kids products because this is the second in the set of three. So this is the middle sized one that I have from my original HA Kid set that I bought probably 25 years ago. And the first one, I used it pretty much daily for about two decades before the little plastic loop finally gave way when I was really struggling with some tight stitches. Um, so really good product. They, they last and they stand up to the, the test that Jada gives them. So. <laughs> 
Really love those things. That's row six complete. Slip stitching across to the next chain one space and into the chain one space and chain three to begin. So back to my ribbons and cording. Uh, Mr. and Stitches, was, were people kind of weighing in on what color I should use? I um, missed it. Yes. I think I was seeing a lot of the striped one, the, the white and... This one? White and red stripe. But we could try a pull. Wow, that's almost exactly the that's same That's almost pink. the same. The ribbon would look good, too, because it would stand out. The ribbon is red, and it would You'd stand out, but still blend maybe. in. Very fun. Very um, fun. Red and white says Raven. Catherine says pole. Yeah, let's do a pole. Want to do a pole? Sure. All right, let's do a pole. So this is going to be for the... It's for the drawstring. Oh, the drawstring, mm -hmm. okay. Marty, thank you, Marty. Marty's picking up a couple patterns at the Etsy shop. Thank you so much. Mr. and Stitches is going to get another poll going. And uh, we'll decide what color what color, or which of these dresses. You know, these are all quite different. This is sort of a... a Pamela asks, how about solid white? Do you have a solid white? I uh, do somewhere, um, but I just sort of grabbed my... It's kind my, of buried. It's, I grabbed my scrap ribbon bag. Okay, we're doing super scraps mm -hmm. today. This is a super yeah, scrap This is a project. scrappy project, for sure. Okay, so let's see. Um, pink, we'll say number one. <clears throat> one, two, one, three, two four. three, four. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four. From in, left in to right. Order, in the order Jada has them on the screen there. Yeah. That makes it easy. Yeah. I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a promotion after this one. <laughs> So once you get that little pattern of three double crochet, chain one in each space kind of firmly rooted in your head, you start to go pretty quickly. So I just finished, I think that's row seven. So I'm really zipping along now. Slip stitching. Oops, come here you. Slip stitching and into the chain one space. Starting in the chain one space, chain three, two double crochet to finish that first shell. This looks so cute in multicolors if you're gonna change colors every row. It's a real, it's a perfect way to use up some of your scraps. I love using up scrap yarn to make gift bags because gift bags tend to be on the small side. Of course they can be any size, but um, there's a lot of ways that you can use your scraps intentionally to make a really cute little gift bag. And it doesn't look like you used up scraps, but it is such a great way to use up scraps. Uh, but this is also really cute, all done in one color. I'm picturing a whole bunch of them, all individual, like single colors, but a whole group of them. Might make cute little loot bags for a party. The two pinks, the two pink ribbons, or cording, I guess, are nice because they, I think they're pretty much exactly a match for some of the pink in this yarn. So that's nice if you kind of want that subtlety. The red is a match for the red in the yarn, and there's not as much red, so it does kind of make the red stand out a little bit more, which is fun. And the red and white is just sort of the red, the red is a really bright red, so it's not the same red as, as in this, but I haven't added my, uh, my little heart applique yet, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with a white heart because it will stand out against all this pink. Um, so that might make the little red and white striped cording work as well. Uh, like I said, I pulled out four that I thought might work with today's I feel project. Like, I feel like we need to see the um, drawstring ideas on the little sack. You want to see it? Mm -hmm. Sure. You okay. could just kind of hold them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. And then uh, we'll we'll keep the uh, pole so, running. This is what the red and white would look like mm -hmm, against mm -hmm. it. Please go on. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's better. Very nice. Now we can really visualize it. Right? Um, this red. Mm. Kind of a... It's a very wide ribbon, so it's yeah. going to end up getting collapsed. It's much more subtle. Much more subtle. Right? And uh, I'll just fold that back up. The pink cording is uh, pretty much an exact match. Yeah. I can't believe that. That is wild. Yeah. Hot pink. <laughs> there we go. And the shiny pink cording, this is kind of like a satin cord. Also, I love this, also a, an exact match for one of the pinks. Yeah. But it's got a little bit of a sheen to it because it's satin and it's skinny. So that's fun too. All four of them are very different. Okay, so you did them in reverse. You did four, three, two, one. Yes, I did them four, three, two, one. Just to make things interesting. Just to make things confusing everyone. because yes. that's how I roll. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. And I did them in reverse. I showed them in reverse. <laughs> Come on, I'm gunning for a promotion here. I don't want you to mess up my poll. <laughs> Isn't that so typical male-female? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll just start from the right. I'll Name just all. do it in the exact opposite direction. <laughs> Even though when I said I was like one, two, three, four. Male brain, female brain. It's because I'm, I'm sure ambidextrous. I'm everyone in the chat knows exactly what you were up to. It's, it's because I'm ambidextrous. My, my brain works first one way and then the other. <laughs> oh, my gosh. couple people talking about the way I hold my yarn. Yes, I realize I hold my yarn a bit a bit differently to others. I didn't, again, I'm self-taught, so I didn't really realize that until I started to see other people who crocheted kind of, some of them, like my, my mother-in-law kind of holds it like she does for knitting. Other people hold it with the same, she holds it though with all the same hands. So she holds and wraps with the same hand, which I think is amazing because she could still crochet really quickly. Um, I learned to knit first and that's how I feed my yarn when I'm knitting, I, I, I just naturally started to do that for some reason, I guess because I find that I can control the tension better with these two fingers. And um, it just naturally went that way when I started to crochet too. So there we go. This is looking like a cute little hat for a doll. <laughs> I'll have a sip of my water. Welcome, welcome. If you're just joining us, Mr. and Stitch has just put up our little project for the day. We are making a Valentine's Day flavored spring shell stitch sack. Now, obviously, if you wanted to make it in Easter colors or any colors, um, this is the perfect little scrap project for you. So uh, go for it. I think the only difference today that I'm going to do to our original pattern, which we have a tutorial for, link below, is A, I'm making it all with one unending yarn. So it's a variegated yarn that you guys chose. And I'm going to add a little heart applique to it, just to make it sort of super sweet for Valentine's Day. Um, I think I just finished row seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, I finished row eight. Holy smokes. Really flying. So I'm on to row nine. Same old, same old. I'm slip stitching across to the chain one space so I can start row eight or row nine <clears throat> in that space. If you're changing colors, Join your row with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three, fasten off, join your yarn with a chain one, or I should say a slip stitch chain three or a standing double crochet, whatever you're comfortable with in any chain one space. And it's the same pattern. So three double crochet, chain one in every single chain one space. You'll always have 12 shells and 12 chain one spaces in each row from row four onwards. Well, we've got uh, 189 votes. Should I send it over? Yeah, let's see what's happening. A couple of them are pretty close, so okay. Let's give it. Let's give it one more minute. We'll call on all lurkers. Come, come over and get vote. our lurkers. Let's get the lurkers in get here. Get the lurkers in here. Pull them off the wall. We love come our lurkers. On. Let's let's dance a little bit. Let's do some dancing. This is uh, we're going to be a pretty decent sized little gift bag. So like I said, it's um, it's perfect for some treats. 
uh, or like a little stuffed toy or something. Like I said, a lot of my girlfriends would thank me very much for a cozy pair of socks. <laughs> so this would definitely fit a pair of socks. Maybe even a tiny pair of little uh, ballet slippers or something. I like stuff like that. You know, sometimes uh, a sweet gift is something often that you you enjoy, but you don't think to buy yourself. I had a great aunt who always used to, whenever you'd say, what do you want for Christmas? She'd say, oh, just a nice bar of soap. And I get it. You know, a nice bar of soap is actually a really nice gift. <laughs> this would definitely fit a nice bar of soap. Murray is asking if we have any knitting for dummies tutorials. Yes, we do, actually. I see Mr. and Stitches is mentioning that. We have an entire playlist on the beginning knitters. Um, so learning how to cast on, learning how to cast off, how to do the knit stitch, and how to do the purl stitch, and how to do the stockingette stitch, which is just basically knitting and purling alternatively every other row. So it's the extreme basics. Um, and once you know how to knit and how to purl, the knitting world is your oyster because every single knitting pattern in existence is a version of knitting and purling where you place your yarn uh, maybe holding some stitches where you put your needles but it's basically all just knitting and purling um, knitting is wonderful so if you don't know how to knit uh, and you feel like you've got some time and some some chutzpah <laughs> learn it is so fun to knit and it's so fun down the road to kind of mix knitting and crochet together i learned to knit before i learned to crochet um and uh, i love both i don't have as much time to knit as i would like because knitting does take a lot longer than crochet but um i really love the kind of fabric you can create by knitting that's another reason i like tunisian had a lot of fun with the tunisian counter blanket because it's kind of a hybrid of the two here comes the pole Woohoo! draw a string color Number two, which is this one, 33%. Number three, which is this one, 27%. Number one, thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much for picking up some patterns. Number one, 21%. Number four, 17%. So number two, one. So we're going to go with the cord, which is basically the exact same color. I like that. I like that. Very subtle. Very subtle. Well done, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for taking part in the poll. Nice big compliment from Meredith there. Thank you, thank you, Meredith. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be doing the heart applique in white. Uh, I see Raven mentioning it there because um, it will stand out. So I want to see the heart applique and uh, it will stand out against all of this pink and red, which is very candy-licious. I'm kind of picturing this full of treats. And uh, I've almost forgotten. What row am I? Am I on row nine? Let me count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm actually on row 10. Holy smokes. Okay, row 10. I'm finishing row 10 here in a moment, and then I've got two more rows to go before I do my little shell stitch along the top. Oh, Nico! Nico, thank you so much for gifting some memberships. Nico has just gifted five memberships. Gifting Ninja Nico, thank you so much. Congratulations to Sylvia, LaShonda, Meredith, Wendy, and Alana. Welcome and welcome back. Thank you so much, Nico. I'm just thinking that this might look good. I'm just considering everybody talking about the color of the... Since we're going to do the, um, the cord that's pretty much the same color, and I'm going to do a white heart, I just thought it might be kind of neat to switch to the white for the, that I'm going to be using for the heart to do the little scalloped shell edging across the top. And the way I need to know if I have enough of that, I may not, I'm just gonna pause. This is something I do a lot. So this is gonna be my cording, just so you know, it's gonna look like this. Let me just weave it in and out through a few rows. So it's gonna look like that, very subtle, I'm liking it. 
I'm going to use this off white to make my heart, which you know what, I'm going to switch to right now. So if you don't want to switch away from making the bag, um, just continue doing what I'm doing, which is three double crochet chain one in every single chain one space. You want to do that for until you get to the end of row 12. I'm just going to take a quick break away from the shell stitch bag to one, make my little heart applique and, and so that I have it made and I can see if I have enough of this yarn left to do the little scalloped shell stitch around the top because that will tie in my little heart applique and then the cording is just doing its job by being a drawstring but it doesn't steal the attention away from the heart and the shell stitch edging. So let me just take a quick break, make the heart. So changing gears at, at speed here. Let's see what unravels first. Eh. Okay, taking my white yarn, I think I need like two yards or less for this. I'm starting with a magic circle. You really do need to use the cinch circle or the magic circle for this because you need to be able to cinch the center of your heart up nice and tight. So I'm starting with a cinch circle. My little chain one secures it. And into the circle, I'm gonna work eight single crochets. So there's eight. I'm not cinching it shut just yet, but I am closing it up a little bit. I want to leave a little bit of space as I work row two, and then I will cinch it shut when I'm completely finished. So I'm not quite cinching it shut yet, but I am making it a little smaller. I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch. So I have a little space there, but that will disappear towards the end. I'm going to chain two and into the next stitch I'm going to work four double crochets. Actually, do I want to do that in the same place? Yeah, I'm going to do it in the same place that I just joined. So I'm going to work four double crochet into the same place that I just chained two out of. So four double crochet in that first stitch, a half double crochet, one of them in each of the next two stitches. That brings me to the bottom. So I'm going to go single crochet into the next stitch, chain two, and then single crochet into the next stitch. So I'm single crocheting chain two, that kind of gives me a little point at the bottom, and then into the next stitch, single crochet, and then I reverse on the way back. Half double crochet, half double crochet, four double crochet. So there's a half, and another half. That brings me up here. Four double crochet into stitch number eight. I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to slip stitch back down into the same. So this is sort of the false stitch. It's the kind of the place that I left from. I'm going to pull the loop up, bring my hook up through that open space. This is why we leave the middle open. I'm going to grab the loop, pull it down to the back. And back here is where I'm going to fasten off. So I'm going to tighten up on that loop. Make sure I don't split my yarn. There we go. Tighten up on that loop and fasten off. So I'm just giving myself one little chain to kind of fasten off with. And then I take that short tail and I cinch it up. And this is how we get that nice tight center. So I'm cinching it shut. And 
you have a really nice heart shape. Now I just silly, I, I should have left a nice long tail to sew it down with, but that's not a big deal. I'm gonna knot these two ends together so I know the whole thing won't come undone. I'll weave them in and then I will uh, sew it down using either a length of this, if I have any left, or I'll use a length of a different color and I'll make it kind of stand out. So lots of options when you're playing with scraps. I'm just gonna weave this in a little bit at the end. So this way I can sort of gauge, I think I might have enough to do my little scalloped stitch with that. So I'm gonna, that's gonna work in this, this white color. Since we are not going with a really drastically different looking uh, drawstring, which is perfectly fine, I will add a little bit more interest by pulling white through the whole thing. So the white heart will sit on the front. That is so cute. And then the white will be echoed up top in the little scalloped color. All right, I don't think that's gonna unwind. I'll just trim that. All right, so there's my little heart applique. I'll just put it to the side. In the meantime, I'll leave my heart and my drawstring available. And I will go back to finishing off my little, so where am I at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Finishing row 10, I've got two more rows of the shell stitch to go. So that is my heart made. I have a sense that Mr. and Stitches is trolling. Am I right? Is he trolling you guys? <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> trolling at all. Welcome, welcome, if you're just joining us. Happy Monday. It is good to start the Mondays with a little bit of crochet and some crafty community. We are making uh, a Valentine's Day version of our splendid spring shell stitch sack. Tutorial for the sack is linked in the description box down below. So if you need a refresher, it's there. The heart applique I just made, we have a tutorial for that linked below as well. The heart pattern is a freebie. Over on our website, there's a link to our website's workshop, pattern workshop page in the description box. And our shell sack, our little splendid spring shell sack, that pattern is available in our Etsy shop. It's today's sneaky sale. So if you wanted to pick it up, it is on sale today. Thank you to everybody who has picked it up. And uh, thank you all of you who are just here hanging out. It is so nice to have so many of you along for a, a little bit of a, a cozy day of crochet. It's fun to make things in real time along with everyone. It really does feel like a, an old fashioned knitting circle. Even if we're not all in the same room, we are kind of all together in spirit. I feel like, I feel like that counts. <laughs> that definitely counts. So that was row 11. I've got one more row to go of the shell stitch. This is definitely turning into a cute little sack. Uh, another thing I just want to mention, because you have uh, no change in the stitch count per row, so once you get to row four and beyond, nothing changes. It's just three double crochet, chain one in every single space all the way around. You can make this shorter, so fewer rows if you want. You can make it much taller. This would fit a bottle of wine quite nicely. You just want to keep repeating this row of three double crochet chain one in every single space all the way around complete like work that until it's the same height and then a little bit taller than a standard wine bottle and that's a really cute wine bottle bag holder same thing you want to put a drawstring on it maybe put a little applique or something on it um, but you can just keep going and if you've got more or less scraps and you're just sort of using them up to make some little bags you can let the amount of scrap yarn you have left over really dictate how big or small you make the bag. So extremely flexible pattern. Use it in any way you need to, to get the bag size or shape that you need. 
I like um, the kind of the medium sized sack, I guess, which is the 12 rows of the shell stitch finished with a row of little small scallop stitches. And that's just the perfect size for a new bar of soap or a pair of socks or a bunch of candies. Mr. and Stitches, I think, is looking for some new underwear, apparently. I'm just, if I'm reading that correctly. No, I was just saying everyone <laughs> was talking about gifting soap and, you know, things like that to people. And I thought if you were to give someone new soap and new underwear, <laughs> what kind of message are you sending? <laughs> I don't know. That you tell me in the chat. Is a <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess it depends. If it's your kids... It's okay. If it's your spouse, <laughs> if it's like a distant relative, ooh, an acquaintance, coworker, that's practically a slap in the face. <laughs> yeah, a coworker, you might as well slap them in the face in real life. Um, someone had mentioned Crystal. Someone, Crystal says that she will be making all. Of our calendar blankets this year. Every and single one of them? I have to say, holy moly. Holy moly. I mean, if you can achieve that, I'd be very impressed. That. That's nine. That's nine if you include this year. Quite a challenge. Holy that smokes. That is a lot of crochet. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? If, uh, you, if you can uh -oh, do it. Krista's in full troll mode. We're going to have to censor Krista. <laughs> Krista, you're going to get censored. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is row 12. Um, I'm going to call it there for the shell stitches. That's what I do in the original pattern. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, if you were going to... Um, if you were not going to change colors to add the scallop stitch edging... You would just want to slip stitch into the next stitch and then just pause while I change colors. Because if you are changing colors, you can just join the row like normal, fasten off. If you're not changing colors, slip stitch into this next stitch, the middle stitch there. Uh, I'm going to change colors to white. I'm hoping I have enough to do this little scalloped edging with. Um, I'm just going to weave my tail in. This is sort of the uh, the lazy weave where I just sort of grab it and pull it back and forth through some stitches because I'm going to be working the, sh the little scallop stitch over top so it'll kind of get pinned down in places. So this is sort of the, uh, the lazy weave. I'm not weaving it in and out with my yarn needle. I'm just weaving it through some stitches here. That's enough. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if I have enough of this white yarn to do the little scalloped stitch. Starting with a slip knot on my hook, I'm gonna join my yarn with a slip stitch in the middle stitch of a shell. Like I said, if you're not changing colors, you're just slip stitching into the next stitch to start there. So I'm joining with a slip stitch. I'm gonna chain two. I'm going to work three half double crochet into this middle stitch. So the same place that I joined yarn in the uh, three half double crochet. The little chain two isn't going to count as a half double crochet. I'm just kind of creating it to bring myself up to the right height. The little scallop is going to be three half double crochet. So ignore your chain two for now. Three half double crochet. And then into the chain one space in between, so this little guy right here, you're going to slip stitch. I'm going to weave in my little tail later. Slip stitch in the chain one spaces. In the middle stitch, so there's your three shell, three double crochet shell. In the middle stitch, you're going to work three half double crochets in the top. I'm going to crochet a little tighter than I normally do because I want to make sure I have enough of this yarn. I think actually I will to make my little uh, scallop shell stitch all the way around. Slip stitch into the chain one spaces. 
three half double crochets into the middle stitch of each shell. You'll have 12 little tiny scallops and 12 little slip stitches all the way around. So this is the little edging. It's just a nice way to finish off the bag. And I figure since I'm putting on a white little heart applique, it uh, ties the applique in nicely. Well, you're getting all kinds of squeaks and squeals here from everyone in the chat. We so like it, eh? I presume everyone's liking the delicate scalloped edge there. All right, and not just the idea of underwear and soap. This is... <laughs> I think we're past that. <laughs> I think we're past the underwear and soap gifting. Georgie, we've got <laughs> membership milestones coming in from Georgie and Dizzy D. Georgie's been a member for 28 months. Thank you, Georgie. Georgie says, I'm retiring this year. Congratulations, Georgie. So I'll have a bunch of time to complete the cow blankets. I haven't done yet. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Making a temperature blanket for a friend's baby girl. Oh, wonderful. Temperature blankets are fun. I love them. Dizzy D. Dizzy's been a member for 12 months with a membership milestone. Thank you, Dizzy. D says, when I discovered your channel, it was right after my cranial aneurysm holy smokes i started crocheting again with health difficulties it got me through a lot thank you hey i'm so happy to hear that you have come out the other side that's a big deal <laughs> and crochet has helped that's awesome thank you for letting us know i'm glad you're okay and um i just want to say d's right a crochet is great for a lot of different things, not just our mental health. It's actually good for our physical health too. I have rheumatoid arthritis and um, I have found it has helped me stay flexible through some of my bad flare-ups. So sometimes I have to slow down and sometimes I have to think a little harder, but um, you know, don't stop. I had great aunts who all had bad arthritis and they all said don't stop so whatever the case is it uh, if you're doing something you love and it's quiet and you can do it at your own pace crochet will help you through a lot so uh yes <laughs> oh my gosh three half double crochets followed by a slip stitch in the spaces so half double crochets in the middle stitch slip stitches in the spaces that gives us a very tiny little shell stitch. I love this edging. This can be used um, across granny square blankets around granny squares themselves. Um, and it's just so stinking cute. It's a nice way to use up a little bit of scrap yarn. It creates a very cute little edging. Looks like, looks, looks a little bit lacy. Oh wow, turns out I had way more than I needed. That is great. So slip stitching into the last space. When you get all the way back around to those first three half double crochets you made, remember you started with a chain two, just ignore the chain two, join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet and fasten off. This looks like ice cream or something. All right, I'm gonna weave in my little tails now. So I'm going to weave this little short one in back and forth a couple times. You're going to have to give us a good look at that edge. I will, I will. Let me just weave in my tails. I want this to be nice and neat. This is definitely tight, so I don't worry about my tails coming undone. There we go. And now this one might go the other way. There we go. Do, 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 do. Back and forth, back and forth. Maybe 
usually wiggle my needle underneath all the stitches first, then I thread up my yarn because the thing with these large eyed wool needles is that they're easy to thread, but they're also easy to have the yarn fall out of. So I, I do all my, my needling first before I actually put in the, uh, the yarn. I find that works out quite nicely. And then I might just pull back on that a little just so it's not, there we go. All right, so once you're all done weaving in tails, take a minute to just sort of pull out and push up that little scalloped edge so you can really see it. That's so cute. I really like that. A little sip of water here. Okay. Um, the nice thing about this pattern is that there really isn't much in the way of a seam. Um, you can't really tell where anything starts or stops. So anything can be the front or the back. And I'm going to, let me weave in my little drawstring first. So I've got this piece of cording. I have a feeling it also came out of a, an existing gift bag. You know, when you get those paper gift bags and they're, they've got little ribbon or cording um, handles. If the gift bag itself has really like, it's <laughs> reached the end of its, its natural lifespan. <laughs> you know, like it, it's all kind of ripped up and it's, you know, maybe you've been using it for other things and you're getting rid of it. If the uh, ribbons or the cording are still good, save them. Um, so there's my little, Trying that little natural bow where you kind of do it might be too difficult. Yeah. All right. I'll just do it the usual way. So I wove my 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 uh, drawstring in and out through the. It's the last few row. It's the last. It's the it's the holes in between shells in that row twelve, the last row of the shell stitch. So that works nice and ni nice and tightly. I can cinch it up, uncinch it, and now. Do I want the heart on the side where the bow would hang or do I want the heart on the other side? Where the, so like, for example, if I have this all sort of tied up with something in it, let me put something in it. Ball of yarn, it's a nice gift to get. Uh, also, you can, you can weave the tail through any line of holes. So if you want more of kind of a poof of your bag out the top, it just changed where you weave your yarn or your, your um, cording and ribbon through. So have it maybe right on the front under the bow or on the back without the bow. What do you guys think? Bow side or back with the bow? Same side as the bow? Bow side, front, bow, bow, one to the back, bow, bow side, bow side, bow side, bow side. All right, front it is. So here we go. I'm just going to untie this. And um, let's get my little heart in place. So now I'm going to, I can sew it down using the same yarn so you won't see it, or I could sew it down using a different Ooh. colored yarn, which might get kind of an interesting edging. How about using the yarn you crocheted the bag with? If I do that, it'll blend in with the bag. Um, so you might not see the edge of the heart as much. You won't but... see the edge, but you'll see the little stitches. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so I could oh use the boy. same yarn as I did with the bag. I could use a completely different yarn, like this red, or I could or use the you same. Could go white. And it'll just be blend in. It won't. It'll just be the heart that you see. So goodness, Sue, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. I don't know, guys. What do you well, think? Well, let's let the uh, let's let everyone watching decide. Whole time. Let's do a poll. Um, I've got white to sew it down with. I've got anything. I could use the same color I made the bag with, 
or I could use any other color that I've got. So for example, this red, or maybe some of this crazy pink. Okay, so we'll use the three options. Mm -hmm. Okay, here it comes. I've got, uh, so Mr. and Stitches has got a little poll going. Um, so yes, I, uh, this bag, it's just so darn cute. It's a shell, it's a simple shell stitch made in the round. Um, there are so many ways you can make this cute. Um, the, we did originally it striping it every couple of rows with nice springy colors. So that's great for spring, it's great for Easter. Um, if you do it all in one color, you can make it to suit a theme. You can make it Christmassy if you wanted. You can make it to suit a birthday theme. These make great little loot bags um, if you wanted to do that. Halloween colors if you wanted to make Halloween loot bags. I love this for Valentine's Day. This is just so stinking cute. And of course, you can always add an applique to the front of it. Make it tall for a wine bottle bag. Uh, make it short for a couple of candies or something. Just use up your scraps. Nico! Oh my gosh, Nico. Nico's just gifted 10 memberships. Thank you so much, Nico. Our flying gifting ninja. Goodness gracious, congratulations to Janice and Marta, Robin, Greybeard, Tony, Roberta, I Crochet, which is Sonia, Ellen, and Anne. Congratulations, you guys. Welcome back and welcome to the family. Thank you so much, Nico. Mr. and Stitches has a uh, poll running to pick the color that I will stitch my little heart onto the bag with. And then uh, this little Valentine's Day pattern project will be wrapped up. While we're waiting on the poll, if you have questions about today's pattern, please feel free to ask them and we will start answering some questions. Is there a pattern or tutorial for your measuring tape cover? I am guessing you mean my little sheep. Uh, no, um, this is actually how the measuring tape came. It's dressed in a little sheep costume. A lot of people have asked though. Uh, my mother-in-law got me this. I think you can get this little sheep measuring tape on Amazon. Um, but we are planning on doing a little tutorial on covering a standard measuring tape because why not? It's just such a cute little idea. Thank you, Sakura Sue. Thank you so much for picking up a pattern. PB! PB's been a member for one month with a membership milestone. Thank you, PB. I was coming back on to join after my first month and was gifted as soon as I hit the room. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. Is there a pattern for the bath? Poof, says Maria. Ah. Maria, I will definitely have a pattern for that. The bath poof, which we was one of the options for today's live stream. I think we'll do that next week's live stream. We'll make a bath poof yes, next week. Yes, you have to show everyone the the bath poof you made me. Yes, it's I don't fantastic. have it. Fantastic. I don't have it. It's it um, is man approved. It's a it's a man scrubber. Um, it's a man scrubber. <laughs> uh, we will have a um, the it members came with a, a new bar of soap and. A pack of underwear. A pack of underwear, a new bar of soap, and a man poof. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I really like it. Um, it's a good size. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it is a good size. So we're going to do uh, a crochet bath poof next Monday, and we will have a pattern for that. In fact, that will be the Silk and Vicuña free members pattern for uh, the month. That will be going up in the um, the members only webpage uh soon we'll let you guys know when it's up but we will be doing that next week as a live tutorial and we will have the pattern available for everybody if you want it we'll also have notes on it in the description box so that'll be next monday uh but there will be a written pattern for that and it will be um that'll be a members members pattern if uh if you're a silver or vicuña that'll be a free pattern for you for the month um and that'll be next month or next week i should say next next monday <laughs> And you guys are asking about the sewing needle case. It's coming. I haven't got it finished yet. It keeps kind of getting shoved down the list of things to do. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, I guess I'll send you the poll. Let's see. How are we doing? 192 votes. Awesome. Nice. Here it comes. Laurel, thank you for upgrading to silk. Which size hook would be best to use if we were going to use DK or fingering weight yarn for this mini bag? Sue, um, I would recommend a, a 4.5 millimeter or a 7, the same one I used for this, unless you want really, really small little spaces, and then you can go down to a 4 millimeter, like a G6, or even smaller. Um, you can always add more rows of the shell stitch if you want to make it bigger or you need it bigger. Um, so yeah, any depending on the size of the, the stitch, but if you want it kind of like a smaller, tighter stitch, then go with the slightly smaller hook, like a four millimeter. The poll is back. Here we go. Sew down the heart with white, 53%. Red, 28%. Crazy pink, 18%. White it is, everybody. Okay. I definitely have enough to do that. So I'm going to cut myself a length. I will thread it up in my yarn needle. And I'm just going to anchor it to the back. Just grabbing the back of a loop on the heart. I'm going to tie a knot. I will tie it twice to make sure that it is on there. And just before I start sewing, I will just kind of anchor this under a few stitches so it doesn't wiggle its way through to the inside of my bag. So I'm just kind of making that little tail disappear. There we go. Great. Okay. And I'll thread up the actual tail. And here we go. So I'm just going to sew, um, I'm going to hold it kind of in the middle so it doesn't, I'll, I'll pause every few stitches to make sure it's not moving. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the loops, the top facing loops of stitches on the bag. I'm not going all the way through the bag. And then I'm going to join, sort of grab a corresponding stitch on the heart. So that's the first one. Let me just make sure I'm not moving. Actually, I can probably do this just by pressing down. And anywhere there's a bit of a gap, I'll just grab the closest loop. Get my hook out of the way. And then the next stitch on the heart. And pull just to sort of tighten things up. All right. Okay, so I'm going to hold it steady. And let's get another little loop here. If you have to move your heart out of the way, that's fine. Grab the loop, put your heart back in place, make sure it hasn't moved. I'm going to get right down underneath that middle slip stitch just so I can keep that nice kind of punctuated sharp heart that little middle of the heart that comes down I don't know what you'd call that the cleft of the heart is that the cleft making sure that I don't interrupt it I want it to stay nice and sharp and then Every once in a while, I'll just poke my hand in here, make sure I'm not sewing all the way through, but I'm pretty sure I'm just grabbing the top facing loops. And I'm grabbing loops of the bag that are pretty much directly beneath where the tops of the stitches or the stitches along the edge of the heart are gonna lie. There we go. And the more stitches you have in, the less your heart's going to move around. So you don't have to check as often. But I do like to... Also, with things like little appliques, I like to kind of pull out areas that I want to stand out. So for example, I want that bottom of the heart to be nice and sharp. So it definitely comes to a point. So I pull it out, make sure that it's sitting where I want it to. And then I continue stitching. So I'm going to grab that loop. And I'm not pulling too tightly.
And if you look like, if you feel like you've got a stitch that's a little out of place, just kind of tighten up. You can sort of pull up on your last stitch like this and pull taut, taut, pardon me, so that you pull the previous ones kind of a little bit more into position. Uh, Mr. and Stitches, are you keeping an eye on the chat for questions for me? Or are you trolling? I figured people? we would take all the questions when you're done. Oh, I so asked. We... I I kind of said since we were pretty much finished, oh, we, could, we could start. I yeah. have not. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, I've been seeing them throughout the live, but I, I didn't want you ha you'd have to go backwards yeah, yeah. throughout the whole. Have there been any recently? Um... I'm happy to answer some questions. Now that we're just adding this little heart on. Well, I don't see any that are right here in the chat, but okay. I'm sure there were a bunch. There we go. Looking good. Bring looking on good. the questions, everyone. Oh, Joanna says I've been fired. Oh, man. Oh, no. I thought I was getting a promotion. I got the exact opposite. That stinks. I got pink slipped. Wow, that stinks. <laughs> Uh, hook size for sock yarn weight, asks Claire. Hook size for sock yarn weight, depending on the project. Um, so if you are making actual socks, then you definitely don't want big spaces in between your stitches. So you want to use the hook as small as you can handle with sock weight yarn, maybe a two millimeter. Here's a question from Penelope. Uh, why start with the, a square versus a circle? Uh, well, technically, when you're working in a shell stitch like we are, um, and you do, you want to start with the shell stitch and maybe you want to start with four shells, which I'm doing, um, a shell chain one, shell chain one, it just kind of ends up looking square to start. Then, you know, you want to increase. So you only have four spaces to increase in because we are working <laughs> shells into spaces. So you do the same thing, shell chain one, shell chain one, that's your first increase. So you go from four shells to eight shells. It's still going to look a little square. So to get away from that square look, we do the increases in the off spaces for row three and that just kind of smooths things up and as you can tell this does not look square at all now that we've been kind of working in the round um it it ends up becoming quite circular so it's not really a square but it is a shape that can be turned into a square it's a shape that can be turned into a circle. Mm -hmm. If you started with more shells, um, first of all, you'd have kind of a, a bigger space. Um, so starting with four shells is the most comfortable way to start, in my opinion, for this kind of a project. Um, but more shells would give you more of a circular look to start with, but might not be like it might, you, you might have a much gappier bottom. And for something like a bag, you want a, a tiny little space. You don't want little things falling through the bottom. So, uh, so that's why. Ellen would like to know if we've heard about the third twist yet. The third twist have on we the heard, calendar blanket. Have we heard about it? Or yes. Have we, have we heard of the third twist or is it yet to come? It is yet to come. The third twist has yet to come. We have not mentioned the third twist yet. <laughs> That is coming. That is coming, my dears. Let's see. Questions, it's a, it's a year full of fun, questions. you guys. <laughs> Don says I was demoted. I've been demoted. You've been demoted, have you? Yep. Guess I'll pack up my desk. <laughs> pack up the well. Pack up the well. <laughs> Can I take the well with me? Kind of like it down here. You kind of like it down there, don't you? Ooh, Penelope says, wait, what's the second twist? Did you not watch the introduction, Penelope? Jada talks about everything in the introduction. <laughs> she talks about sizing. 
squares, options. What yes. else do you mention? All of the information you need. Variations. Uh, every possible little bit of information you might need uh, for the to begin this year's to project get is included in on Friday's video. Uh, there are two things coming. Twist number three, which is a surprise. We have yet to get to that. And we'll be discussing joining information. A lot of people are already asking about joining. Um, and we are going to discuss joining very quickly <laughs> because I know some of you might like to join as you go. Some of you might like to just start to join your squares as you're making a bunch of them or you've got a bunch of different patterns or should say blankets on the go. So we are going to discuss joining options very, very soon. Um, Robin wants to know, what cute video games are you enjoying right now? Ooh, uh, well, I've got... I don't know, I guess... You've been playing a lot of... Um, craft the world on your tablet yes i cannot stop playing that yes game. they have recently released that on the on mobile and jada has been digging into that pretty good since christmas i'm just going to make a little knot here and weave in my tail i'm going to make the knot as tiny as i can because i don't want it to be too obvious mela says i can't take anything i want so i guess i'm not allowed to take the well <laughs> <laughs> and everything that's in the well, which is all the food and snacks. All the food and snacks that you've been you've been hoarding. I get to empty the snack drawer. That's part of the agreement. All right, there's my um, little knot. Diane would like to know when is Mama and Stitches gonna come on? She will be on. We do plan to have Mama and Stitches on, yes. and and possibly regularly. Yes. But we aren't in a position to do that at the moment. Not but quite we, yet. We we're we're planning on doing that we'll see how it goes yes all right i don't need to weave in my sewing tail too much so i'm just gonna trim that there and there's my little heart so heart is on it is yeah it's pretty pretty straight that looks good and uh and now i can cinch it up fill it full of goodies so there's my, there it is, looking into it. It's pretty tall. Let me just Is that my it. parting gift? You're going to send me away with that little... Your little well parting little gift? bag full of goodies? So, top to bottom... I don't know bottom, if the well will fit in there. It's about five and a half inches, just barely, maybe 14, 13, 14 centimeters in height. And <laughs> diameter is about... Oh... Four inches, 10 centimeters, maybe 11 centimeters, just a little over. Four, four and a half inches, somewhere around there. So that is a, that will fit. Um, if you want to keep going, it'll fit a wine bottle. If you want to just make it um, this the height that I made it, it's perfect for a whole bunch of things. Little treats, uh, socks, underwear. <laughs> <laughs> nice Again bar of with soap. The underwear. A really nice bar of soap. Again um, with the soap. And then, of course, you can cinch it up, tie the little bow, and uh, your little heart's going to show. Oh, my gosh. I like that. I love little gift bags. So if, when uh, if a spouse receives new soap and new underwear in that extremely adorable Valentine's bag, are they within their rights to reject the gift? Or refuse the gift, if, or do they have to take it? If uh, if what's the rules, guys? What's the Let us know. So what for spouse to spouse? Yeah, from spouse to spouse, are you allowed to refuse gift gifts? Are you telling me you don't want anything for Valentine's Day? Because I can no, get I'm on just board with only that. If it's soap and new underwear, <laughs> or soap and new socks, anything with soap. You love soap and new socks. <laughs> I love soap. <laughs> I am a soap person. Yes. <laughs> Um, I think a, okay, so let me just grab something I want to share with you guys. Hang on one second. <laughs> Joanna says it's the thought that counts. Yells wanted to know if we are going to uh, do the Granny Square game this year. We will definitely be doing some yes, Granny Square games. actually game. we planned, we were hoping to do it last summer. Absolutely. But we just got too busy, so. So, um, ooh. this is soap absolutely gorgeous That's it's the kind of soap that you want to display there. and it smells amazing can i just say 
So if uh, this is why I say a nice bar of soap, make the bag to match the soap if you can. So if you've got like purple scraps and you get like a purple, look how pretty that is. It's lavender. Beautiful. It'll fit inside the little sack nice and neatly. And then you can sort of give them a nice ball of, a bar of soap and maybe like a, or maybe a couple bars of soap. So that, that oh, that is so cute. It, that fits quite nicely. Um, if it's a really, if it's a cute little stubby bottle of, of soap, um, you can make the bag to measure, like, like have the little gift next to you and keep going until the bag sort of will fit it. Wow, look at, listen to how heavy that is. Jeez. Um, <laughs> nice big bars of soap. I think that's really nice with a, a little gift bag. Uh, but you can make the gift bag to match the gift in color if you want, which I think is really cute. Hey, Wendy. Wendy's been a member for 23 months. Wendy with a membership milestone says, great project. Love it. We need a double heart, Jada. A double heart. Double heart. Double heart? Maybe like one on like top two? of the other. Like a, like. Oh, like like two hearts. Like, two like hearts kind of like. Kind of together. Kind of together. Of? Oh, that's a cute idea. Yeah. I like that. Or maybe like a little heart with like an arrow through it or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes you can decorate the string um lena says put some beads on the end of the string absolutely you can put oh, some like if you've got idea. big beads like that. yeah uh you know anything that looks cute maybe pom-poms or something pom-poms that's a good idea absolutely uh mila says she's going to make the bag a little bigger and include a bath scrubby with it agreed 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 we're going to do the bath poof next week we actually have some cute scrubby uh, tutorials on the channel, but we're going to actually do the bath poof. I'm sure a lot of you have probably made a crochet bath poof. If you haven't, next week's going to be a great refresher. Um, they're a super simple project and you really can't go wrong. It's, uh, it's basically a math formula. It's the easiest math formula and you don't actually have to do any math. The, way it, the reason it looks the way it does is because, because of the math formula that's in the, the little poof. It's super easy. Um, it's just it's just uh, counting, and if you make mistakes, they don't show. <laughs> My favorite kind of Ooh, crochet. Those project. are the best kind of mistakes. So uh, we'll be making some poof. Uh, we'll make some bath poofs next week. They are super useful. They are so cute. You can make them in any colors. Um, I recommend 100% cotton, like the scrubby stuff you would make uh, bat like um, dishcloths out of. You can use um, that uh, scrub it yarn that isn't too sharp, obviously, because you want to use it in the bathroom. But uh, I say regular 100% cotton because you want to be able to see your stitches. I'm going to have some, um, some, some stuff to demonstrate with next week. And I'll show you the one I just made for Mr. and Stitches, which uh, he calls a man scrubber. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It is awesome. It's awesome. And it's and fantastic. one of those would fit in this bag. So we'll do that next week. And you guys will have a perfect little gift for uh, for Valentine's Day for anybody. Don't forget your friends on Valentine's Day. Don't forget, you know, the neighbor's kids, your, your co-workers, you know, yourself, for heaven's sakes. Make yourself a nice new bath poof. When's the last time you made yourself a new bath poof and got yourself a pretty bar of soap? Hello, ladies. <laughs> pretty bar of soap and a bath poof treat yourself damn it <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be our new motto yeah treat yourself treat damn yourself it. damn it <laughs> 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 oh my gosh so that'll be next week and uh, of course this friday we will have a friday video for you stay tuned for that so um if you have photographs of our brand new granny squares from our brand new granny square pattern uh, our stacked shells granny if you've got photos you'd like to share with us or the community please feel free to pop into the etsy shop click message sender or just your current thread send us a photo and if you make um today's little sack and you give it your own little twist or you make it nice and pretty i don't care what colors you use um, whether it's valentine's day or otherwise and you want to share a photo same thing pop into the shop send us a picture and let us know it's okay to share and we will put together a community post we have uh, more versions of the stacked shell square coming this afternoon from all of you. Uh, thank you so much. Who's been uh, everybody who's been publishing and sending us photographs. We've been really excited to publish the pictures because the color combinations are amazing. I love it. I love it. I can't believe how much a granny square can change just by how you play with the colors. So uh, inspiration galore. If you're not sure whether you want to do one or what colors you want to choose, uh, we'll have a bunch more color options for you today because uh, all of you are just so darn creative. So uh, that is coming soon. And uh, any last questions before we let you go and see you Friday? 
All right, let's wait for some questions to come in. Wendy says, my 11-year-old is doing the calendar blanket this year. I need to send you a pic of his square. Yes, yes, yes you do. do. I'm going to link the, um, if you don't see the pinned comment, that's our Etsy shop. I'm going to link it again. Um, that's where you'll find the sneaky sale, which is the current little bag Jada made. And also, um, if you want to send us photos you want to use the message area so you yeah you I click on message seller and link. then inside that message box you'll see a little photo like a camera icon or a little photo icon just click that and it'll let you attach a photo that you've already taken or it'll let you take a photo depending on what device you're using um, so that's how you do it pop into our Etsy shop click message seller or if you've already got a message thread open with with us just uh, in there, there's a little inside the message box. You'll see the little photo icon. Click that. It'll tell you to attach a photo. Um, yeah. Could you make a chain of heart appliques to make a banner kind of thing to sew to the bag, says Melissa. A heart, a chain of heart appliques. Yes, absolutely. Um, you could. Let me think. Chain of heart appliques. You could make a bunch of the heart appliques and then start chaining and attaching them as you go. I think, have we done that before in a live stream? I can't remember if we have or not. Um, that would be really cute. You could attach them all around the top. <laughs> okay. I'm not seeing any other questions, but can you tell me the name? Oh, the dark blue yarn with the gold, says Regina. Uh, the dark blue yarn, this dark blue yarn is Mary Maxim Starlet Tweed in Mariner. And the gold is a Bernat Super Value gold color. Um, so but the blue is kind of got a bit of a tweed to it. That's the blue. And then these ones, this is, um, these are all burn at premium acrylic. So white sky. And I think this one's called sunny day. It's a bright yellow, sunny sun, sunshine, sunny day, something like that. Um, yeah. And what yarn is that I use for the bag? This is, this is, Oh, what is this? Is this a red heart? I think this is a, this is a Red Heart Super Saver variegated yarn. Um, candy print. Oh my gosh, it's actually called Candy Print. There you go. Candy Print. Red Heart Super Saver Candy Print. It's an old, it's an older one. So I don't know if they make it or not, but um, sure, it does look like candy. I think that was well named. <laughs> um, if you've got any other questions about today's pattern, feel free to leave it in the comments section down below or on the in the comment section of the original shell stitch bag tutorial which we also have linked down below and uh i am back to doing uh questions here i try to answer everybody's questions on on youtube at least once a week sometimes i get to it a couple times um but uh definitely if you've got comments or questions feel free to leave them in the comment section on any of our videos because i do get around to seeing them at least once a week if you've got questions on any of the patterns you've picked up from us, feel free to message us at our Etsy shop. If you want to share pictures, same thing. You can message us at the Etsy shop. And um, I want you all to have a wonderful week. We are almost done with January. So the winter is, uh, you know, going to get itself finished. And then we'll be off into the spring, which I love. So it's nice to think ahead. This is why it's nice to do a little bit of a Valentine's-y thing today. This is only a couple weeks away, Valentine's Day. Take care. Have a great week. Stay cozy and fresh. And we will see you on uh, on Friday for video. Mr. and Stitches, anything you want to add? Um, I would like to add um, our new 2024 channel motto. Treat yourself, damn treat, it. Yeah, treat yourself, damn it. That's going to be our Jade and Stitches motto for 2024. <laughs> treat yourself, damn it. <laughs> Love it. Love it. We'll see everyone on Friday, I guess. We eh? will see you guys all on Friday. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your support. Mm -hmm.